<clears throat> Hi there, and on to the next chapter. This is going to be primarily about fiddling and faffing around with the uh, battery compartment and the front end of the model. And the reason I say that <clears throat> is because I've offered up the batteries that I'm going to be using, which is the uh, these uh, China Hobby lines, 3,700 milliamp hour batteries. And to fit these in the existing battery compartment in the nose of the model is going to be uh, quite difficult, through the battery hatch anyway. So I may have to make a modification. Now you with yours, if you're using a smaller battery pack, obviously you may not have to make the same or do the same modifications, um, which is fair enough. But I'll show you what I mean. This is the compartment for the battery. And if I slide that battery in there, you'll see that to get it in place, I'm going to be impinging at the front end on the motor. To bring that back, there's not enough room for the back here. So what I'm thinking is that I'm going to have to make an opening in F three or F2 sorry for the battery and in doing so rather than putting the battery in from this side I'll probably have to put the battery in from the back so I'm just investigating that at the moment and in order to investigate that I need to cut the plastic molding for this end this part of the fuselage <clears throat> so here, here is the moulding. I've already cut the, the flanges off, so I'm just going to embark on cutting the ends off. Because I need to see where that goes on the fuselage for obvious reasons. Now cutting plastic moulding like that, as I say I've used the scissors to do a rough cut. I'm now going to cut the ends there. So what I've done is I've marked a pencil line just to aid the cutting. So I'm not going to cut right to the edge. I'll do the final trimming with um, either the Dremel or with sandpaper or whatever. So I'm just going to cut round the pencil line. And I'm using these scissors which, let me just put them against there, you can see they've got a curved nose as opposed to standard scissors which are straight. And this allows me to cut round fairly tightly um, in terms of cutting into corners. So I'm just cutting this down, hopefully you can see me doing that. I'm not going to get into the right into the corners yet. Cut down there. That's that bit cut and I'm going to do the same with this side. Let me just point the camera back a bit just to make it easier to see. That's better. And again using the curve on the blades to assist me this actually is a curved shape around the front so we're just going to snip around there. I want to see how feasible it is to make a hatch from, from this. I may decide against it, I may decide in fact that I need to change the battery option that I'm going to use. So you can see that fits on top of the fuselage there. I've got to be careful because I've got a canopy, a cockpit canopy that goes over here too. So if I make this removable how is that cockpit canopy going to keep fitting over there because it should theoretically fit, fit on top of that. So what I'm going to do now is just trim these better so I've got a flat surface. A tip here when you're cutting the plastic, I said I've used my scissors to cut it out, that's fine. To get to a fi the final line because they're only rough cuts, especially on the length, use a razor plane. Um, can be used carefully, not too deep a cut each time, 
Um, unfortunately my arm is in the way of that. But I'm just going to use the razor plane down the edge of the plastic, cutting off small strips backwards and forwards. And I expect all you can see is my elbow. But what I'm doing is just going down the edge like that with the plane and what that does it gives me a nice straight line which I can just finalize with the sanding block there. Which is fine. Once you've cut roughly cut the the ends, if you look closely inside the mould, there, oh sorry, the plastic, there is a mould marking, a mould line, which is the line really you should be cutting to. So just mark that with a pencil or a pen, both ends, and you'll see that you can cut that back because the, when I put that on top of the balsa fuse and put it where it's going to be, the there you can see that the the cowl there does need cutting back but I'm going to concentrate on getting this first of all in line and then what I'll do is rather than use those mould lines I'll cut to the cowl that's actually I can see here the cowl sorry the former F2 I'll cut to that so with the plastic cut more or less to shape, put it around the right way would help. That's going to sit more or less on the line there of the former, back edge of the former. Going through the front just clips the top of the top fuselage side there and there. I see I just need to alter it a little bit. It's fine there but this side needs to be oh no it's not too bad just a slight trimming back of that edge there so I'll just sand that. That will hopefully sit a lot better on there now. There's the centre. I've got a bit of wiggle room there. Can I may just trim that a little bit more? Needs about another millimetre off this corner here. <clears throat> That's better. Fits on there fine now. Yeah, it's going to mount in position really well. Good, good, good. As I said earlier, my concern is really the battery um, and putting that in position. I'm going to have another look at that again because it may just, you know, that may just fit in there. It's going to be a tight fit, so if I push it there and get my hatch, you know that's going to, 
in all probability that's going to fit fit in there. I've got to watch the, as I said before, the bottom edge, but I think, bearing in mind that the the motor, let's just hold that up to camera, the motor's going to come in the middle here, obviously in the middle of this ring here, it's the centre of the motor. I think I'm going to be all right there. Yeah, I think I'll be fine. So, which is good because I don't have to mess around, faff around with making this into a removable hatch, which is great. Good. Um, talking of the hatch, battery hatch, the thing that you will have to do is just sand down. In fact, let me take that front former off. Where the tongue of the battery hatch goes through F1, it's a bit too long. So I've sanded mine down so it's flush across there. And you also got to remember that when you are putting the hatch into the plane, when it's all assembled, it'll have to go in at an angle like that into the slot, which is going to be difficult unless you put a chamfer. So again, let me just see if we can hold it up to the camera so you can see what I mean there. There's a slight chamfer on that edge there so that when it goes in at that angle, no problem at all, and then sits down and then pulling out. See, it can move like that. If it didn't have that chamfer, then that would be stuck in there and wouldn't be able to, to move it up and down. So just a little chamfer on the back. Good. So the next thing I'm going to do, because I'm working on the plastic bits, is cut the, the moulding here for the top of the battery. So that's the gun trough moulding. These are the two blisters that go on the lower cowl. I'm going to cut this moulding out and trim it because the idea is that this fits inside like that and then it's glued into there and then the whole thing can slot into place on the fuselage. So again, let's get rid of that block. Get the big scissors out. Uh, Elmo's, Elmo's been playing around with the clips again, as you can see. He's been in the clip, the clip tin. I told him not to, but you know, and he's been whinging that he's been in a bit of pain. So let's just, right. And I think what I'll do is, he's been complaining about not being really part of the proceedings, the filming. So what I've done, is I've given him a new role. He can be in charge of that camera there. Which I think he'll be happy with. Well, to be quite honest, it's tough if he's not. Okay. Move this out of the way. And move the camera back up. That's better. So as we were cutting out this this moulding here, so just trim along the edge. Now the moulds are, as I said when I was looking at the other one here, uh, they are, if you like, oversized. So you you're allowed plenty of leeway to trim. So don't be afraid about 
Oh, am I making a right? Oh, I've cut it, I've cut it, I've cut it, and I didn't mean to. Not too much of a problem. I'll clear that plastic up later. So, so again, on this one here, that's going to fit. There's my... Moulding there, and this is going to fit against this moulding there. So it forms the troughs of this, sorry, the troughs of the gun trough go underneath, in effect, the, the blisters of the guns there. So I'm just going to trim along those lines. I'm just wondering whether I could, could actually leave that one in place. Um, <clears throat> can I? Let's mull it over a bit. I'm pretty sure I can leave that in place and the, to a certain extent the sides as well. Let's just push this former back on. <coughs> It needs to be trimmed, but where does it need to be trimmed? Where's the best place to trim it? In all probability, this is the best, better place to trim it at this end here, because my cowl ring, oh by the way, the cowl ring that I glued before is fine. I did reinforce the glue, and what I did was I, you won't be able to see it, but I with my Gorilla Glue clear, I just ran some into the inside of the joint there and moved it around. So that's that's quite firm. That's quite firm now. So that's going to go in there. And what I will do, I'll get my reinforcing block back because that's quite handy. Stick that underneath because that'll hold everything in place for me whilst I faff about, although it won't hold that in place there, no, that's not going to work Ron, back to where we are, okay, so that's going to go there, we're going to have to make sure that this, the front edge of this sits over F1, why, because of thin ply which forms the cowl there is going to butt up against the ring the nose ring there so we can't have this sitting on top it needs to again butt up so that the front edge at least needs to be just the thickness of the plastic so literally, we're looking at cutting that out we're looking at cutting that out down to that shape there, so again using my curved scissors to give me a bit of a start there we go Cut that all the way down there. Cut out the side pieces as well. slowly does it as I cut through that can't feel much of a lip there Let's 
plastic that'll bend back nicely so I can sand the rest of that lip off. There, oops, Elmo's just jumped off the camera, he's had enough. A bit of a lightweight, he doesn't really like concentrating for too long, especially when he's not the centre of, of attention. So the point really of what I was trying to make was that will sit on there like that so that the cowl ring will go up and they'll butt up to each other there with a nice joint. So that's what I've got to aim for. <clears throat> so this has got to be cut further back but generally speaking yeah that's what I've got to aim for. So if I look at this here and mark and say right That's the back edge. There. Keeping these sides on may not work. I may have to cut those off. Uh, I don't know yet. But we've got to support the... We've got to have some support for the um, ply battery hatch tray base it's got to stick onto it somehow <coughs> so mounting on there that's going to go to the front edge there in fact, no, I think what I'm going to do to make it a nice neat fit, I'm going to cut I'm going to cut that out as well and have that overlapping like I've done on the front. That's going to give me a better fit. Can't go down any further because obviously the, the, the battery tray, sorry, the battery hatch lid, when that goes in, that's going to stop when that clip gets into the hole there and then that's going to sit on it so I think I will cut that out just leave the thin bit of plastic at the top to sit on top of that former that will neatly locate it and that will then butt up nicely with the guns as well I'll do that off camera you've seen how I'm doing it so now that I've sanded the or cut the ends off and sanded them there, you'll see how it's going to fit. So that's going to slot in there like that. And then this is going to butt up to it there. So we've got a nice, a nice tight joint here. As much as we can anyway things are going to move once we stick this to the the hatch and so on but basically that's what I'm trying to achieve there that sort of nice close fit this end here I'll trim off once the hatch base has been fitted talking of which that hatch I keep calling the hatch base it's not it's the top <clears throat> That's going to fit in here <clears throat> something like, like that there, bearing in mind that that has got to slot in. That lip will go over the top of that former and then that's got to drop down into there. So I'm just going to mark up now where that needs to go in terms of this gap here at the back, which is basically the width of the of the width of the former there. That's where that needs to, to go. And then I'll in all probability glue that in place there like that. And then, in fact, what I might do first of all is mark through 
the position of the slot that's going to have to be in there because that takes the so I'm coming off camera mark in there the position the slot that needs to be cut in this here round about there because that takes the pin of the slider locator catch that goes in the back okay so I'll just mess around with that now off camera so I've gone and cut the slot <clears throat> I just drilled drilled two holes one either end of the slot and then joined them together um, there and that's it so now I'm going to glue that onto there and clamp it up and once again I've thoroughly sanded or braided the sides of that there um, again I'm going to use not my preferred glue as you all know by now I'm going to use super glue for this and there Plonk it into place. And I'll let that dry. Another reason I'm going to let that dry is because it is so cold in my workshop. I know Richard said, sent me an email and said, you need to get a heater in there, Ron. Get one of those lorry diesel heaters. Yeah, maybe I will, Richard. I don't know. But at the moment, yeah. It is kin cold. So that's a wrap for this.